Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before you, Lord, and we acknowledge that you are Lord and God in this place. We ask your grace and mercy as we will be listening to your word. Grant us wisdom and understanding and grace to apply the truth that we are about to hear. God, we acknowledge that we are weak, we are frail, and we need your enabling. In Jesus' name, amen. So, good morning, everyone. So, happy to see you. And uh, the text that we'll be discussing this, uh, we'll be tackling this morning is taken from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. The word of the Lord says, Therefore do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary and light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. This is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Now, while scrolling on the social media, I noticed this post from uh, maybe a person, yeah, a person, and then, I, and then, ang iyang giingon, na, umalis ako dari ka, Jot, kaya di makayas ako ang goggles. Gamay ka. Okay, ito na lang ang inabot ng 1K ko sa grocery. Burjo. Bread crumbs, magic sarap, two nor sinigang mix, modes napkin, o oh, babae, gaday siya, kaya na may modes. Two Colgate pork and chicken cubes, dili meat cubes, ra? Tingali, magkamunggay ni Sao niya. Three a safeguard paminta. Wala pa yung mismong iluluto. So, I believe we can relate with this person. You notice that your money, you know, that you have, the, the inflation rate is really uh, struggling. You know, makastruggle kayo to budget. And for us, it seems in, uh, discouraging because aside from this inflation that we are experiencing, there are different problems that we are experiencing in homes, uh, stubborn kids, uh, maybe if you are an employee, demands from work, if you are a businessman, maybe there's pressures, there are pressures or over you, no? Targets that you need to accomplish. And stress, discouragement lingered in our hearts. And uh, there are four you know, common causes of discouragement. This is from pastors.com. Fatigue, you are stressed. And you are frustrated you know, from all these uh, unmet demands or expectation from uh, people or failure and fear. I don't know about you. What's your heart's condition right now? Are you discouraged? Are you about to give up? The Word of God has something for you, for you to be replenished, for you to be renewed. 
So discouragement and failures are what we are facing day by day. But we need the Word of God to strengthen us. So that's why the title of this sermon this morning is Overcome Discouragement. This is a command. Overcome Discouragement. So, first, let's, let us define discouragement. A feeling of being less confident, less hopeful. And according to John Bloom, if we linger in discouragement, it can be costly. Its sense of defeat and hopelessness saps us of energy and vision. It can consume a lot of time. It can keep us from doing what we need to do because we don't want to face it. it can, and it can even be contagious, weakening others' faith. So discouragement is dangerous for your health, actually. It affects your physical aspect. It affects your mental aspect, even emotional and spiritual. And it's contagious. So you're not just affecting yourself, you are affecting others. So therefore, we need to combat this. We need to fight discouragement. But how? Take comfort of God's promise of renewal. That's the first step. Take comfort of God's promise of renewal. Okay? Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.16, it says, Therefore, we do, we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, yet our inner self is being renewed day by day. This is Paul talking. Now, there were people who are questioning Paul's apostleship and even Paul's motive of ministering to the people of God. And Paul defended his apostleship that his intention is pure. Then he discusses his sufferings that he experienced as he ministered to the people of God as he obeyed God and yet he endured and during this time Paul take comfort of God's promise of renewal he said therefore we do not lose heart because God is renewing him day by day this is the grace of God for those He has regenerated. God has awakened our inner man, our spiritual life. He gave us spiritual life. And that's why we are able now to delight in the law of God in my inner being. So God did not just awaken us spiritually. He also renew us day by day. That's why we are able now to enjoy the presence of God. We understand His Word. We have spiritual vigor because of God's enabling, God's sustenance, delighting in the law of God in our inner being. But let us be reminded, according to the words of Jesus, when he found out that Peter was sleeping because of, uh, maybe P Peter was tired, exhausted, he couldn't pray anymore because his body gave up. And Paul warned Peter, watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. The Spirit is willing. The Spirit is willing to worship God. The Spirit is willing to delight in the Word of God. The Spirit is willing to Pray, but your body is weak. Therefore, there's struggle. 
that we are facing day by day. This is spiritual warfare that we are facing every time because our inner being is willing but our body is weak. David says in Psalm, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Apostle Paul accepted the fact that his body is decaying. His outer man is weakening. Kung nai when I entered this building and they saw me wearing these glasses and somebody commented, Pastor, you're like a scientist. Seems like I'm wearing goggles. Because last time I stood here, I cannot see the screen. I, I can see the screen, but it's blurry. I have to have a remedy. That's why, you know, that my vision is 2020 right now. So that's why I can see you when you are sleeping and uh, careful, I have a, a I, vision, you know, uh, night vision. <laughs> so, that's the reality. I cannot deny it anymore that my eyes are now, you know, weakening. Dili na 2020 vision ng uban guys smile smile dia tingali dili eyes ang imong problem but your knee huh? You know the struggle that our body is weak our flesh is weak okay it's failing Akong mata ga struggle pero na akong kaubang pastor ga struggle pug arthritis um, So di lang halata kay grabe yang diet Oh, a bike bike siya. <laughs> so, alata gede ka pun. So, nahinala. But we can still say that God is the strength of our heart because God is renewing our inner man. There's joy in the Lord. That's why we do not let our physical you know, body to hinder us in worshiping God because the strength is in the Lord. So that's why even though our knees are um, in pain, we go to church, we worship God, we, we savor His presence because in His presence there is strength. In, uh, in rehab ministry, uh, one of the ministers ministering to the patients in rehab, struggling in substance abuse, recovering, 80 plus years old. Uh, you know her. And she handled 15 to maybe 10 to 15 men. She was able to counsel them. Where does her strength come from? There was a person who just got retired from work. Yet, he went to the mountain and ministering to the unsaved people. His strength come from the Lord. So that's why we must admit, yes, our bodies are failing. Our bodies are decaying. We are actually dying. Real talk lang. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. God is renewing us day by day. That's why you were able to worship God. Na ay virgin coconut oil. Oh, so many related sa wali. So, tiyan mo. So, una, oh, before na lang. Okay. English mo na ini. My wife and... Uh, with her friends used to have this uh, beauty kanang supplement. Murag magpa-dextrose bito sila. Pero ang sulod, ah, nabisa, dextrose kay kanyang ginatawag nga glota. Painjig sila dia. Kay para murag pangpabata daw. No? 
Okay kayo, gasto lang yung kayo. It's so expensive. And nai na advice nga, virgin coconut oil. Ang imo, what you need to do is just to apply it before you sleep. No, virgin coconut oil, not the used oil, no? After cooking, do not do that. Just virgin coconut oil. This is different. 500 per liter in the uh, SNR. You apply it in, in, your, in your face before you sleep and you drink two tablespoons every morning. It, it helps you not to, you know, kind of your, your stomach will not be acidic. Virgin coconut oil, there are a lot of benefits. And most of us are spending, uh, yeah, amount of money to, for us that our physical well-being is uh, conditioned. But we need to understand that yes, physical exercise is of limited value. If your resources, time, talent, and treasure is only for our body alone, according to the Word of God, is, that is limited value. But we must prioritize what is eternal. That's why godliness is valuable in every way. So therefore, this is what Paul is talking about. That yes, you know, he's, he's looking forward to, to the promises of God. He admits that his body is failing. Yet he is hoping for the future. And he spends his time talent and treasure for eternal things. The second point for us to combat discouragement is trust God in the process. 2 Corinthians 4.17 says, For momentary and light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. Paul is talking of his affliction. There are trials and he trusted God that God is using his affliction to mold him. And then in, in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9, he said, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. This is Paul speaking. And what kind of affliction that he is going through, he was going through. In uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 23, he says, are they servants of God? I speak as if insane, I more so. In far more labors, in far more imprisonments, beaten times without number, often in danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Jesus Christ, before he was crucified, he received one of the 39 lashes. And we saw the passion of the Christ, what happened to the back of Christ. But Paul received five times of that. I could not imagine anymore why Paul survived it. Three times, according to Apostle Paul, I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Night and a day I have spent in the deep. I have been frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. Physical affliction, emotional affliction, name it, Paul experienced it. I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, 
often without food, in cold, and exposure. According to Apostle Paul, apart from such external things, there are daily pressures na pa mga badlungon, ng mga simbahan, ang kay problema. Okay. Pressure na galing sa gawas. Apag sa sulot. Murag nagpagawas na sa gibati si Paul. Okay. But in spite of that, Paul, Apostle Paul says, I take comfort. Yes, these are painful things. These are struggles. These are not easy, according to Apostle Paul. But he take comfort that these are momentary. This will not last forever. These are all momentary. And Paul says this, is light affliction. Ah! Paul, after all saying those painful experiences and it's just light for you, are you denying the reality, Paul? Paul is actually, you know, seeing what's God, what God is preparing for him, not on what he is experiencing. He's focusing on the eternal things. So these are momentary. So whatever your situation right now, your struggles, remember that all of them, all of it are momentary. Are all momentary. It will not last because eternal heaven glory is waiting for those who are in Christ Jesus. So that's why we labor, we continue to labor in spite of the pain. We continue to go to church, fellowship with brethren in spite of the pain because we, we are thinking that these things that we are struggling in this earth are all momentary. Momentary. And Paul says, this is light affliction. Sickness is heavy. Cancer is scary. Bankruptcy. All of those things. But if you compare it, these pains that we are experiencing now to what God has prepared for us, we can say that it's just light affliction. Do we have such faith in God? No. This is Jupiter. And according to the scientists, the, uh, Jupiter can fit you know, 1,300 Earths. So, if you feel that you are carrying the world so burdened with problems, look at what God has prepared for you. It's just so small. So, there was a, a friend of my kanang wife. Uh, he accompanied her daughter going to Manila to watch kanibitong K-pop. Nasabi mo mga sounds of K-pop. I, I could not understand the, 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 the words, but I, I can stop my feet when I'm listening to it. I can also do that. <laughs> so, and when I found the, the price of the ticket, it's so expensive. But that young people are willing to spend a lot of money sacrificing, you know, falling in line just to enter the building and waiting and then the, this group will dance and entertain you for a moment of happiness. They're willing to sacrifice just for a moment of happiness. And after that, going home, then so exhausted, but for us Christians, we are different breed. Why? 
because we are willing to sacrifice for eternal joy that is ahead of us. That's Christianity. Our time, our resources is spent on eternity. So therefore, we must set our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. According to Paul, no, these problems, trials, persecution that, it, that is going through, this is producing. There is a product. This is not wasted. God is using it to produce something bigger, something greater, eternal weight of glory. And Romans 8, 18, according to Paul, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. What is this glory? What is this eternal weight of glory that Paul is looking forward? No, that is producing this is eternal weight of glory of Christ-likeness. 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, we are now children of God, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. We know that when Christ appears, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. That's why we take comfort that this present world, God is transforming us, and the finished product is in glory that we could reflect Christ's character. We are complete. That's why we must understand that all things, according to God, works for the good for those who love Him and have been called according to His purpose. The main business of God for us Christians is to transform us to become like His Son. And the Word of the Lord says this is the goodness, the ultimate goodness that God can do to His people, transforming us into the likeness of His Son. In verse 29, For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed in the image of His Son. This is the business of God. That's why He allows no? Painful things, yes, including the happy uh, events in our lives. But the ultimate goal is that the, it would contribute to the goal of God to each one of us is to be conformed in the likeness of His Son. So that's why this also should be our main goal in life. Whose image are you building? Whose image are you reflecting? Are you building for your own image? Or are you spending, devoting to conform in the image of Christ? That's why sometimes we are frustrated because our good that we are thinking that God can do to us is not the good that God wants for us. For us, the good that we want is, Lord, prosper all this thing that I, you know, pray. Help me achieve my goals. Lord, for us, that's the good. Yes, that's good, but not the ultimate good. Because the ultimate good is for you to be transformed. That's why God is able to use even those Heartaches that you experience because His goal is for us to be transformed in the image of His Son. So we must conform to the will of God. Anong daghan man problema ang Christian? Of course, we are fighting this world. There's struggle, there's evil around us. But every painful things that we experience are not wasted because God will use it to conform us in His the image of His Son. 
familiar mo ni, ni Laura Story. Blessing. I will not sing. I'll just read. And the, the context or the inspiration of this song is, Laura is not really a, a songwriter. But when her husband got sick, got brain tumor, he, she prayed to God. And God somewhat did not answer her prayer the way she wanted it. And so, she contemplated of her experiences and he wrote, uh, she wrote a song and then this is one of the lyrics of the song. What if my greatest disappointments or the aching of this life is the revealing of a greater thirst for this world can't satisfy? What if trials of this life, rain, the storms, and the hardest night are your mercies in disguise? Because God is using all those storms, rain, hardest night to conform us into the likeness of His Son. That's why in James 1, 2, and 4, consider it pure joy when you read this passage, are you not questioning the truth of God? Considered pure joy. There's no joy in pain. But if you are a Christian and you know the purpose of it, it can be joy. Why? Because no, bro, according to James, considered pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, many kinds, a health, relationship, money, any trials because you know that the testing by your faith produces, again, there is a product of it, produces perseverance and let perseverance finish the, the culmination of, of these trials and pains. The finished product is what? We will be mature, we will be complete and not lacking anything. Mungan itong gusto that we will be mature, we will be complete, and not lacking anything. In short, we will be Christ-like. So, take comfort of God's providence, of God's sovereignty in your trials because God is molding us into the image of His Son. Eternal weight of glory, the second of Christ's presence. Philippians 1, 22-23. But if I go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me, so that shall I, so what shall I choose? I do not know. I am thorn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ again, which is far better. The Paul is longing to spend eternity with Christ and enjoying Him forever. That's the eternal weight of glory that God is preparing for Paul and for all of us. So trust the process. God is conforming us. The affliction is producing something good in you. So stop complaining. Bagutbut, bagutbut. Lord, kadagan bagtao, ganong ako man. Ganong dili siya. Siya po, ganong di po siya. Magtinuklura na lang tayo. Nga mas, kumpara, kumpara, mas buutan pa mangko niya. Instead, accepting it. Because God is using it for your good. Toil with eternity in mind. Paul says, While we look not at the things which are sin, but the things which are not sin. For the things which are sin are temporal, but the things which are not sin are eternal. We must understand 
that God is promising us good, not just today, but even in the future. So that's why we must fix our eyes on what God has prepared for us. So, on so many things that are temporal, in the context, Paul referring to the temporal pains, persecutions, momentary, he was not fixing his eyes on the problems, but instead, he's fixing his eyes on, on what he will gain in Christ. We gain more in Christ. Toil with eternity in mind. That's why when you work, think that it contributes to eternity. That's why you are working unto the Lord. Work as you are serving God. When you give, when you give to the kingdom of God. Diba? That's why we are able to you know, have this joy in our hearts because everything that we do for God, it contributes to eternity. This building that God has provided, every penny that you spent here, you are spending it with eternity in mind. We are preparing for the next generation and the other bu building will be built soon. Toil with eternity in my Yes, life is hard. Life is hard. But we are not toiling for the things that will just, that will perish. We are toiling for the things that will last forever. That's why Jesus said in John 6, 27, do not work for the food that spoils do not spend your time, your talent, your treasure. Do not invest in, in the things that will just gone. Instead, spend your time, your talent, your, all of you for the food that endures to eternal life. Mumana siya. How about you? Where do you spend your life? Where do you find meaning? Now the question, to whom are you living for? Pero we take that as, as a question for all of us. To whom are you living for? Are you living for yourself, for others? That's momentary. But if you're living your life for God, that's eternal. Hebrews 12, 2 and 3. It says, For the joy set before him, Jesus Christ, he endured the, cr the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is seeing the, in the invisible. Christ Jesus through the eyes of faith, so that we will not grow weary and lose heart. Muna weary ta and lose heart because we are not fixing our eyes on the eternal. We are fixing our eyes on the temporal. Now, if you're fixing your eyes on the temporal things, surely you will be discouraged. You will be disappointed. But the word of the Lord says, those who trust in Jesus will never be disappointed. Because God is faithful. God is faithful to sustain us daily. Questions. Discouraged? Are you discouraged? Are you losing heart? Ikaw sujanti, had demands? Employee? Employer? How are you? Discouraged? Plunge yourself in the presence of Christ. I like the word plunge because I, re I was reminded of an, an advertisement on the TV with the meaning juice. And then when he drinks the juice, it seems like he's plunging on the swimming pool and being refreshed. So if you are discouraged, plunge yourself. Be refreshed in the presence of Christ. Pray. Go to church. 
Spend time with Him. That's the only way for us to, be, to gain strength, to strengthen our inner man. Plunge ourselves in the presence of Christ. And feed, di ba? Ang makapabaskog sa to, makaon mangyay. Now later, ito mo gawas na Joyful Channel na ito. It, it feeds your physical body, but we must feed our inner man with the promises of Christ. This is the only way for us to combat discouragement. There's no other way. Only in Christ alone we gain strength. We gain renewal. Spend time with Him. So ayaw I neglect the, you know, the corporate gathering as a church in the small group, big group, because in this way, we are able to experience renewal, strength that we need for us to journey in this life to glory. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word this morning. Lord, we are weak. We need your grace and mercy, Lord. Without your help, we can't survive this life, oh God. I don't know what's going on to your people right now, but I pray, oh God, that you would replenish their soul, their inner man, Fill them with joy and peace that only you can give. Only you, O oh God, can satisfy our hearts. Forgive us, O oh God, that sometimes we are looking to this world. Lord, help us to fix our eyes on Jesus as a source of our strength. For your glory and honor alone. In Jesus' name, amen.